Hi everyone, in my previous two videos we have covered why or why not you should be using Typist and how to install it on your computer. Today we are going to cover a crucial aspect, which is its markdown-like syntax. By the end of today's video, you will be able to learn how to add headings, figure, tables, list, and much more to your document. So let's get started. Typist syntax combines the best markdown simplicity with LaTeX power. It consists of three main syntax categories. Text markup, as you can see here, is basically just simple text and we can just decorate it with these stars and then we have the test in bold. This is very similar to markdown. But then we also have content functions and here we can use them to add figures or to add headings. As you can see here, we can add an heading with an equal symbol followed by a space and then we can pass the text or we can define a figure here with the hash and then we have figure, open parenthesis and then we pass the image and the caption and the tag when we want to later on reference this figure. But then we're not limited to that, we can also have code blocks for more advanced customization and styling. And here is an example. So here we can kind of define, for instance, a note, and then we can specify many parameters here, the stroke, the width, the radius, and then we can use this function here later in the text. We are not limited to that, but we also have functions to change the page layout. So let's start with the basic, and then I'm going to take you through all the different syntax and the text formatting. Because it's different, as you can see, from Markdown, but I'm going to take you and show you step by step how to use all the major commands in Tipist. On the file here on the left, I have added some basic text formatting. I'm not going to explain everything because some of them are self-explanatory and you can always pause the video to kind of see which are the commands, but you can see that some are different from Markdown. For instance here, if you want to highlight some text, we have to pass this command here, which is hash and then followed by highlight and then square braces, and here we can highlight this text here. We can have inline code, as we would have in Markdown, inline functions, and we can also specify the language here, or we could have, say, Python, any other language. We have text in bold. We have also normal text, which, of course, this is going to be most of our document. I'm showing you how to add subscript and superscript, and this is very intuitive and very simple. We can see also to add underline text and links. In, ta in, in typist, sorry if I'm going to confuse the names, sometimes I will call it typist, sometimes typist, but uh, usually we can leave a space to go into a new line, however we can also use the uh, backward slash to have kind of a line break. But also we can have single or double quotes, and we can have the three dashes, like for a dash, and we can also draw in line. So this is very handy because we can just draw a rectangle and we can specify the width of the rectangle. And this is a rectangle also, the height of the rectangle will be the same and we can plot that. In Typist, we can also add emojis directly into the test and that's not going to be create an issue, but we can also have a comment in line. So we can comment as a block or as a line. The block is a forward slash followed by an asterisk and then we can write our text and then when we close it is the opposite so an asterisk followed by a forward slash but also we can prepend in front of the text like two back forward slashes and then we can just have a command in line there is the command um, the function that is very easy to add just placeholder text which is lorem and then we can also have a number, so we can do calculation directly into the text, as you can see here, I'm just using a hash key, and then inside the brackets, I put like whichever equation I want to do, and then we get the results straight in to the, into the document. But also we can have math in line if you actually want to show that one plus two. So it's very, very uh, flexible and we have a lot of commands, the same basically that we can have uh, in LaTeX and more than what we could have actually in Markdown. Now let's look at how to structure your document with headings. So the first thing that I want to show you is how to change the page number. We don't have to add this command here at the top, but I want to show them to you 
because we are looking at how to structure the document. So the numbering is very intuitive. So we are defining like a numbering one and the document will have a page number one and two, but we can easily change that and we can actually say A and then we can see that the page numbering is A and B. So let's revert it back and then the same thing is with the headings. So we can specify just one and then we're going to have the classing headings. So one, uh, two, and if you want to have like a period between them, we just put one dot. But it's also very nice because we actually can specify one dot A. And as you can see here in the table of content, we have one, one A, one B, and then we have one B A and so forth. So you can go even nested. So you can have one, a letter and then another number. I don't know why you would want to do that, but very there is a lot of flexibility over there. So here we're also defining the title of the document here, which you can uh, change. So if I put S, it's going to change. And then here we are uh, actually adding the test with this align center and then we're defining the test size. The outline command allows us to print the outline and if I of course remove that, that will disappear. And so basically how does the table of content. And then we can see that to add section is very simple. So one equal means heading one and then we have two uh, equal means heading two and so forth. So we have level three, level four and level five. And then you can just structure your document like that. So if you want to start a new section, you can start back with an equal sign followed by a space, and then we have another section. Lists are a crucial part of a structured document, and let's see how easy it is to add them in a typist. So if you want to have an unordered bullet list, we're going to use like the dash symbol. So as you can see, we can have first item and second item, and then we can have a nested item by just indenting uh, with two spaces uh, uh, compared with the, with the previous one. And then we can also have another layer of indentation and we can have even a deeper nesting. But if you instead you want to have an order number list, uh, you can use the plus symbol. And again, you can use the plus symbol and you can indent it if you want to indent it even further. Uh, not only we can have list uh, enumerated or unordered, but we can also have terms. So a term is a definition. So we can just define this term here. And this would be nice at the beginning of our document if you have abbreviation or a definition of terms that we want to kind of have a nomenclature section. And I'm going to explain more that in a separate video because that's kind of a separate topic on its own. But here you can see how you can add the terms and you can have just a forward slash and the term first and then the definition and automatically typist highlight the term for you in bold. You don't have to do that. Typist Excel at handling links, cross references and footnote. Let's have a look on how you can add them and also let me explain what you need to do here at the top in order uh, to get a uh, nice formatted document because if you actually see that if I comment out this code here at the top, we're getting three errors here. So let's look at the text, text first, and then we're going to see why we need this kind of page heading and math equation numbering. So first I want to show you how to add a link, and this is rendering very well because here, so here I can click on this link, but also we have like some uh, just text, and if you add this tag here with uh, a smaller sign followed by intro, then we can actually refer to this section later on in the text. So here I can say set the text, put some text here, and then I can tag basically intro, and you can see some text here in section one. This is very handy, but in order to do that, you need to have the adding numbering because see, if I comment this out, I'm getting an error because this intro, it doesn't know what number to kind of reference. So in order to do that, we need to have the adding numbering. The other thing that we can also see is here is to reference the results, which is the same thing as, as we did basically reference the intro. But we can also say that see page one. 
And uh, in order to do this kind of more uh, um, reference uh, that we are having here, which is very nice and very handy, so we can also put it in line, we of course need to have the page numbering because we are saying C page one. But in order to do that, we basically need to have the, basically the page number. So here again, if I comment that set page number, I'm getting an error. And finally, the same concept is for referencing an equation. So here I'm going want to tag this equation. So equation one demonstrates how to sum two numbers. And of course, I need to have the math equation numbering as well. If I want to do that, and as you can see here, very nicely, we have the math equation. You couldn't see it before just because I've zoomed out so you can see better. Finally, adding uh, references to a bib file is like a breeze, is uh, even better than in LaTeX because we just basically have to import the bibliography and of course you will need to add like a reference.bib file here and this is exactly the same as in LaTeX so you can just create a tag of an article followed by curly braces and then you have to specify but this is just basically an export in uh, bib uh, format and, uh, and you can get that from Google Scholar or wherever you want. But the nice thing here is that now in our document, we can just reference that document by using that uh, keyword uh, kind of tag. Because if I go back to my reference.bib, bib, you can see that my article is like Tartarini uh, underscore uh, personal and then 2022. So that's very handy and we can uh, reference uh, documents in uh, our paper like that and then uh, typist basically prints down the bibliography for us and we can also have the um, reference here in the text so according to the recent research and of course if you want to we can also change the style. Finally the last thing that I want to show you is the footnote and if you want to add a footnote again it's very easy we can use the uh, hash key followed by footnote and then inside the uh, square braces we can just write the text and the footnote will appear here at the bottom of the document. Adding tables is also very easy, is slightly different from Markdown and of course is different from LaTeX. If you've already seen my LaTeX video, I like to export my tables directly from Python so I don't have to manually write them in LaTeX because it's a bit convoluted and also here in Typefist is a bit convoluted to add tables because it's not difficult, it's much easier than in LaTeX but still I wouldn't want to write this manually. So I will look into if there are ways of exporting like a table formatted like this from Python. So that's going to be very easy. But in summary to add a table, just a table in line, we can use the command table and then open parentheses. And then here we get like define the column width. And then here we can specify the children. So you can see that there was kind of an help we can have the heading in bold and we already seen how to do that text and then each cell is surrounded by a square bracket and then here if you want to just basically to have the one column to be dynamic and to just basically expand and take the full width so having like kind of a float in CSS you can basically say 1fr and this is going to expand and fill in the space and here we can have left align, center align or right align and you can see how it's going to render here in the table and we can also change the stroke and then we can have of course a total column where we can add the total. Again I will look into ways of adding um, a sporting table directly from Python and I will let you know once I find it. So including images and figures is very straightforward so we can basically add uh, like just an image here with the, the command image and then mountain.jpg and then we can specify the width. However, it's always nicer to kind of wrap this command image inside the figure because then we have much more flexibility. First of all, the figure will be kind of already center, aligned, and then we have a caption that we can define and we can also have a tag which is going to allow us to reference this figure here in the text. Of course, I didn't mention that, but you will need to have a, a JPEG or a PNG already in your directory, so a typist can basically import that document. And uh, to add a table and to have it numbered and to add a caption, it is a bit strange because you have to wrap it inside the figure environment, 
but then it's exactly as we did before. So we can add a table and we can also include a uh, caption. So now we are going to be able to have this table. And let me add a tag here. So we are going to just add this tag and we're going to call it uh, like uh, table. And then and we're going to show data in and then we're going to say table. And now we can see the data in table one. So super handy, super easy. It's just a bit strange that uh, when you want to add a table, you basically wrap it in a figure environment. So here we can define the style of our document. So here we are specifying the title of the, of the document. And this is going to be basically the title of the PDF. And uh, this is not actually the title that is going to appear here. And we've already seen before how to add the title if you want to. So here we can specify a font, make sure that the font that you selected, you have it installed on your computer and we can select the, the size. I am not a huge fan of this. I mean, of course, sometimes it's very important, important to be able to customize these kind of things, but don't overuse it because again, here we want to focus on the content, not on the style. So I'm going to show you, of course, how to set page margins, uh, change the font because this is important, but be mindful and don't overuse it. So here we can change the margin. As you can see here, we have a Y margin of 4.5 centimeters. So there is much more space here at the top than on the left side. We can specify the numbering of the page and then we have the number aligned if you want to center or if for instance you want to write. So now the number is on the right. We can set, set that we want the paragraph to be justified and then we can define the note that you've already seen before. So before I show you how you can create a function to add a note and all the rest you've already seen it because it's basically just a heading with some text. And there you have it. In today's video we have learned what makes typeis truly special in syntax. In the next video we are going to cover the bibliography, how to add one, which you've already seen it in this video, but also how to edit and to format it based on your needs. If you like this video, please consider liking it and also subscribe to my channel. This really means a lot to me. But also I would like to thank you for watching the video all the way until here. All these videos are made possible by people like you who support this channel. So if you can, please join the channel here or find other ways down in the video description below on how to support my channel. Thank you very much for listening and I hope I will see you in the next video.